Hi everyone. Um, here we go. So we are doing the senses and the special senses that we're focusing on that they focus on in the book is um, hearing and seeing. So vision. Now you have to know that we can talk about the sense of smell, the sense of taste, the sense of touch, um, but they don't talk about it um, in the book. So we are just going to focus on the ear and the eye. So we'll talk about the anatomy first, and then we'll talk about the physiology and some issues, okay? Um, also, do not forget, we're going to have a test next week. It's going to be on chapters 13, 14, 15, and 16. 15 and 16 are short. They're short chapters, so I'll have videos on them. We'll have homework on them, and that'll be due next week. And next week, we'll have an exam again on 13 through 16. All right, let's go ahead and begin. So the learning outcomes, very similar to the last chapters. So now the ear. So the ear can be, again, pictures. Pictures are beautiful, right? And so we're gonna see a picture in a second. But the ear can be divided into three parts. The external ear, right? So here, right? So um, you, what you can see, and if you look, the oracle is kinda, it's almost like a funnel. And what it's doing is it's funneling sound waves. They're actual vibrations um, in the air. Let me move me over here. Okay. They're actual vibrations in the air and it's funneling it in. And then the middle ear, that has the, the auditory ossicles or the bones of the ear. And then the inner ear, that has the special sensory cells for hearing. Okay. So the stimulus is vibrations in the air sound and it has to go through the ear it has to get converted into electrical impulses and that travels to the brain and it's in your brain that you actually hear what it is that you're hearing okay so the and the ear is not all not only involved with hearing it's also involved with balance right so sometimes people can have ear infections and they might have issues with balance, okay? So we have structures in the ear that helps us know what's right side up when we tilt, when we spin. You know how kids love to spin and get all dizzy? That has to do with the ear. And unfortunately, sometimes there are some genetic conditions where people get vertigo and it could be issues with the ear. All right, so let's continue. So what's the cranial nerve? Remember cranium from the, from the head? The eighth cranial nerve, also known as the acoustic or auditory, those, it has the impulses for hearing and balance to the brain. It's gonna carry the nerve, it's the nerve that carries the impulses for hearing. All right, so again, pictures, so helpful. So here's the oracle, kind of like a funnel, right? Conducting vibrations. Here, that's the external acoustic canal, so it's the ear canal. Here, that's called the tympanic membrane. That's that's the eardrum, okay? So the it will vibrate. Here are the auditory ossicles. They are the tiniest bones in your body. They're in the ear, and they're going to vibrate. And then over here, it's called the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. And then over here, this is the, the inner ear, okay? This is the middle, so outer ear, middle ear, inner ear and it's here this is called the cochlea cochlea means shell so it looks like a little snail like look at it okay this contains the the cells that are involved in with hearing and here's the semicircular canals these are involved with balance okay of course you have blood vessels going to the ear here is the cochlear nerve um and the auditory nerve is going to go here so again vibrations vibrations here are the cells that are going to get stimulated send electrical impulses now to the brain and it's in the brain that we actually hear okay so it really helps to have this table right so the oracle oracle also known as the pinna collects direct sound waves to the auditory canal external acoustic meatus the, the auditory canal that's this right when you're cleaning the earwax with the q-tip you got to be real careful you don't want to get here you do not you can okay i have Horrible stories of kids doing this to other kids, not on purpose, okay? You, you can puncture the eardrum, so you got to be real careful you don't go too deep. 
Um, it says external acoustic meatus that your numerous glands line the canal secrete cerumen earwax to lubricate and protect the ear. That's what earwax does for you. It actually lubricates and protects, keeps insects out. I know that sounds horrible. Again, there are some stories about insects getting in there and doctors having to go in and take them out. Okay. Tympanic membrane, that's the eardrum. Middle ear contains the ossicles, malus incisabes, transmits sound vibrations to the cochlea, equalizes external, internal air pressure. You know, like if you're going up the mountains and then you have to yawn or going down the mountains. So it, it's involved with air pressure. Now to the inner ear. So the cochlea located there contains hair sensory receptors for hearing vestibule and the semicircular canals, right? They're gonna be involved with balance, okay? And positioning of the body, all right? So that's basically it, okay? Um, so not that difficult, right? And then now with this chapter, we're gonna talk about issues with hearing. By the way, if you lose your hearing, if you have hearing loss, okay, if you lose those sensory receptor cells, they don't show it. And, and I don't think they don't show it in your book. If we were taking physiology, we would get into it and you, you'd see those, um, those cells. If you lose those hair cells, do you get them back? No. Okay. So hearing loss can be permanent. So you have to protect your hearing, okay? It's a real problem, especially with young people, um, with earphones and if sounds too loud, um, they can damage their hearing. And as we get older, you know, most people do have uh, hearing loss, yeah? Because we damage our hearing. So protecting those cells is really important. All right, so talking about the external ear, talking about the middle ear, um, the ossicles, the auditory ossicles, the malleus, the incus, and the stabes, middle ear. Yes, there is a connection between the ear and the throat. So here in the middle ear, there is this eustachian tube. Let me go back. Okay, here, eustachian tube. Okay, that goes to the throat. So for example, if someone's sick and they have an infection, the bacteria can travel up and they can cause an ear infection, okay? And we hear about ear infections. We hear about ear infections with kids. They are more prone to ear infections because their eustachian tube is shorter and the angle of the eustachian tube. And, you know, why should you care? Why is it a big deal? We've probably all had ear infections at some point in our lives. Um, if you've ever been sick and, you know, your throat hurts and, and it's kind of like itchy in there. And then if, if it's ever sounded like you're underwater, you've had an ear infection. Okay. Now for kids, if they're having chronic ear infections, they can lose hearing. It can amount to damage loss. Right. So that's called otitis media. So they have a little section in your book about that. All right. So um, they talk about that. Here, the ear-throat connection makes the ear susceptible to infections such as otitis media and mastoiditis. The eustachian tube equalizes air pressure to ensure the eardrum vibrates maximally when struck by sound waves. So it's talking about the ear canal, how it's pliable. The eustachian tube is shorter and straighter in children, and because of that, they're predisposed to ear infections. Okay, the labyrinth, the inner ear um okay right there's fluid in there and as the vibrations travel they move the fluid and that moves the hair cells and that's the stimulus that gets um the electric impulses going so the cochlea yeah we talked about now how about people who can't hear people for whatever reason you know whatever happens are they born deaf do they become deaf what happens there's something called a cochlear implant and it's super neat okay it's 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 amazing right and it's amazing how far um medicine has come and how much further it can go yeah this is on page 533 the cochlear implant a small complex electronic device that helps provide a sense of sound to a person with profoundly deaf or severely hard of hearing external portion sits behind the ear second portion is surgically implanted into the skin so look at this okay and what this device does is it it takes those sound waves and it, it 
um, transmits them into electrical impulses that can stimulate the nerve so then that information can go to the brain and a person can hear. Now the person has to learn what are the sounds, etc. And if you've ever, if you've ever um, had a child of, or known of people who, who are deaf or hard of hearing, if they can't hear, right, they have a hard time with producing sound because they can't hear what it should sound like, yeah? So with these cochlear implants, they've really helped people because if you think about it, hearing and speaking, those are our ways of communication, one of the ways of communication. Of course, there's sign language also, but you think about a child and how frustrating it would be for a child if they can't hear and if they can't speak and if they can't communicate. So the cochlear implant has really helped with um, speech, right, with, with rudimentary hearing and for communication. So it's really quite amazing. Um, they show this with a child, right, with the implant. So here's the device. So there was an external portion to the device and there's an internal portion, again, to take the sound waves, to change it into electrical impulses, to then stimulate the nerve so then their brain can actually hear sounds. Really neat, okay? It does not restore hearing, but gives us useful representation, but gives a useful representation of sound and helps to understand speech used both in children and in adults. So here it talks about kind of the physiology, okay, and you just need to know the basics, right? So the sound waves are travel, that they get collected by the oracle, right? Directed to the eardrum, causing it to vibrate. So that's what we're talking about. The vibrations move the small e bones of the ear, movement to the oval window, pressure waves, and then the fluid in the inner ear moves, and then that is going to stimulate the hair cells. The waves cause vibration in the hair cells of the organ of corti, that's in the cochlea. These vibrations are picked up by the auditory nerve that transmit electrical signal to the cerebral cortex. There's cerebral cortex in the brain where it's interpreted as sound. So it's in the brain that we actually do our hearing, okay? So the ear is just kind of this, this thing for transmitting sound, taking it from that pressure to actual electrical impulses, and it's in the brain that we actually hear. So it's a beautiful, oh yes, this is good, right? So the sound vibrations, vibrations here, and then it's here, right, that we are sending the information to the brain. Vestibule, okay, so that is um, this section over here, and that's going to be involved with, again, um, equilibrium, right? Sensing up, down, etc. So semicircle, semicircular canals, hair cells, part of sense of equilibrium, utricle, saccule, okay. Um, they're, okay, let's keep going. So, okay, keep going, right? So dizziness, motion sickness are associated with continued movement of the fluid. Dude, okay, so if you spin, 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 right? And then you stop, the fluid's still moving and the brain's like, whoa, okay, your eyes are telling you one thing, your ears are telling you another thing, and that causes dizziness and motion sickness. So that's, and for some people, some people, I mean, we're all different. So some people are more um, susceptible to motion sickness and dizziness. And really, it's kind of that disconnect of what's actually happening. Your eyes are showing you something, your ears are telling you something else, and your brain's having a hard time processing it, so the dizziness and the motion sickness. With aging, yes, um, the oracle, dry wrinkled, okay, dry, okay. Um, having issues, there are changes in the inner ear, sensitivity, sound, understanding speech, balance, hearing loss results from degenerative changes in the inner ear. So again, with aging, we can have hear loss. Um, we can have issues with the cochlea. Um, so if it's noisy sometimes for older adults, they have a hard time with hearing, right? Discriminating sound. Audio, audio, we're talking about hearing. Metry, what is that? Measuring, yes. End oral, end within oral, we're talking about the ear and then pertaining to. Uh, hearing aid, yes, we can have hearing aids. They can help with amplifying the sound, right? So they have an easier time with hearing. By the way, I don't know if you guys know this, 
they actually have apps on the phone that can help people with hearing. Um, yeah, so it's kind of neat. Okay. Um, now, hearing loss and why do we care? With young people especially, um, we're seeing that it's happening, okay? So it says sustained noise over 85 decibels can cause permanent hearing loss. Risk doubles each five decibel increases. About two in every 10 teens have lost some of their hearing ability from exposure to noise and not aware of it. So if you go to a rock concert and it's really loud and then afterwards you're hearing the ringing in your ears, that's not good, okay? You're having some hearing damage. Um, it's, if you have a job where it's really loud, you gotta protect your ears. They talk about a healthy work environment, right? So exposure, how, how much exposure, how much time of exposure, what are the decibels? So being aware of that and protecting your hearing. High-pitched sounds are the first to be affected by nose exposure. As hearing loss progresses, a person can start to have difficulty hearing, particularly when there's background noise. Excessive noise, right? We can have damage to the hair cells. Otitis, okay, ear-itis, inflammation, yeah, otitis media, often difficult to detect in children who do not yet have sufficient speech and language skills. Like I, my son's really good friend had tons of ear infections and had hearing loss as a result. His parents didn't know, and the child was really acting up. Again, you can imagine how frustrating it would be if you can't hear and if you can't talk, yes? And if the parents don't know, they don't know. And that's why it's so important to take your child to the doctor and then they will do an assessment. And from there, if they're concerned, then they can um, send the child to a specialist. So common signs of a titus media, we're talking about ear infections, right? Unusual irritability, it hurts, okay? If they have a fever, that's an infect, that might be a sign of an infection. If it hurts, if they're tugging at their ear, if they're crying, if they're right, so those are some signs. Difficulty sleeping, tugging, pulling one ear, fever, fluid draining, loss of balance, unresponsible to quiet sound, sitting too close to the TV, being unattentive. I had one child who would get a lot, my, out of my children, I had one child who would get ear infections and his pain tolerance is really high, so he would never complain. And that was a problem, right? So I had to really watch him if he had the sniffles or if he was sick. So um, it shows otitis media. Um, there are different pictures. You can actually go online. Maybe I'll bring some, I'll put some pictures up. Um, you know, when a doctor looks with an otoscope, looks into the ear, they know what to look for when they're looking at the eardrum, right? Um, and it could be red, inflamed, etc. Autolith, again, auto, we're talking about ear, lith, stone, yeah. Here's an otoscope to look into the ear. Peri, peri means what? Around lymph, yeah. Uh, yeah, tinnitus, over 50 million Americans have it. Okay, what is it, right? So we're talking about when there's that ringing, right? Possible causes, hearing loss, loud noise, medicine, other health problems. So hearing aids, medication, mask, or small electron it can make tinnitus less noticeable, provide some relief. Uh, I can't even imagine having ringing in my ears constantly and it's painful, it doesn't feel good, right? So they talk about that. Drugs, analgesics, antipyretic, antibiotics. So, so things to help with ears, ear infections, ear pain, uh, vertigo. Some people have vertigo. And like I said, it can be a genetic condition. And again, I can't imagine like feeling vertigo constantly, right? And so there, there are drugs to help people with that. Uh, tests, right? So testing for hearing. Uh, eye movement, okay, sound, pure tone audiometry. So they're talking, again, looking for sound, auto, auto, otoscopy, tuning fork test, rind test, um, mechanic membrane. So looking at Right, different things here. Abbreviations, abbreviations uh, that have to do with the ear. All right, we are finished with the ear. Now we're gonna get into the eye. I'm gonna go ahead and stop and then we'll continue.